Welcome to Adam's Athenium. Let's take a look together through the news and records of our times as we try to shed light upon the unvarnished truth. Thanks for coming back to listen to this episode about feminism. Let's talk about its history, the four waves of feminism, and we'll conclude with my thoughts on the matter. Yes, a man is going to talk about feminism, so if you're going to get offended, go ahead and leave. I may be a man, but I'm still allowed to be educated, knowledgeable, and to hold my own opinions. As previously stated, there are three accepted waves of feminism. Currently, many sources say we are currently in the fourth wave of feminism. What does a wave of feminism mean, and how long can a wave last? Let's get some definitions out of the way, and then we'll go back through history. According to Merriam-Webster, the essential meaning of feminism is the belief that men and women should have equal rights and opportunities, organized activity in support of women's rights and interests, or the full definition of feminism, belief in and advocacy of the political, economic, and social equality of the sexes expressed especially through organized activity on behalf of women's rights and interests. Now as to the first definition, that is what first the first wave of feminism was about. The first wave of feminism began in the late 19th to the early 20th century. This wave primarily fought for women's equality, voting rights, and to move away from women being seen as property. I personally think that most modern Americans are or would be in support of the first wave of feminism. I know I certainly am. However, this is about as far as I can support the term feminism or feminist. Why, you may ask. Well, the second wave of feminism took place from the 1960s to the 1970s or even through the early 1990s by some estimates. This wave promoted, as quoted from the four waves of feminism, written by Martha Rampton at Pacific University, Oregon, the second wave was increasingly theoretical, based on a fusion of neo-Marxism and psychoanalytical theory, and began to associate the subjugation of women with broader critiques of patriarchy, capitalism, normative heterosexuality, and the woman's role as wife and mother. Sex and gender were differentiated, the former being biological, and the later a, a social construct that varies culture to culture and over time. In this quote, we can see where sex and gender began, where the sex and gender definitions began to change and become blurred lines. This was also referred to as the wave of sexual liberation, as this was also when contraceptive pills were introduced to American society. From approximately the early or mid-1990s to approximately 2011 or 2012, the third wave of feminism was ushered in. This wave, according to Emmeline Sokin Huberty from HumanRightsCareers.com, writes in an article titled Types of Feminism, The Four Waves, was defined by many women more freely expressed their sexuality in how they spoke, dressed, and acted. The sometimes bewildered second-wave feminists, many of whom had resisted traditional femininity. While many ideas and many movements swirled around in this time, the one rule was that there weren't rules. A woman should choose how she lived her life. So in the third wave of feminism, we saw women go back to what some would call slutty or suggestive clothing and makeup choices. I'm not here to debate the women's choices, just the actions of the broader movements. If you think back to the early 2000s, at least for me, this is when TV, media, sports, and entertainment in general started showing more cleavage and sex on daytime TV programming, if you remember that, or suggestive TV ads that played later at night. Now let's start wrapping up the history section as we touch upon what some are calling the fourth wave of feminism. According to Anapriya Narsaria from ScienceABC.com, she writes in her article titled, what are, the <clears throat> what are the Three Waves of Feminism? She writes, There is also an ongoing debate concerning a fourth wave. Apparently, we need a tsunami to achieve equality. This most recent wave is believed to have been started in 2012 and specifically deals with issues of sexual harassment, rape culture, and body shaming. All right, now that we've defined feminism using a dictionary's terms and have looked to history through women's eyes, 
as to the meaning behind each of these movements. Let's have a discussion about what feminism has achieved and how it is perceived. Feminism has achieved equal rights and pay for women to a significant degree, and in some sense favors women. Women can vote equally now. Women are no longer legal property, at least in the United States. Where you live, things may be different. Feminism has not achieved equality for women, however. And what does that mean, to achieve equality for women? As Dr. Jordan Peterson as expertly asks, what about plumbers, electricians, and carpenters? Their workforce is 90% male, on average. Don't these feminist equality types want equal representation in all categories in order to be completely equal to men? When you take into account people's natural human choices, which you have to account for, then nothing will ever be perfectly split between men and women. And for the other side, nursing professions. If we want equal representation, then should the majority of nurses and doctors who are female be fired and forced to learn one of the previously mentioned trades? Feminism, in my opinion, reached its peak and its goals by the 1990s. What has come since has been anti-man, anti-government, Marxist punchlines. After the 90s, it became okay to be a itch or a slut. The goal was to be a bigger whore than men were. Dress how you wanted and do what you want, act how you will, and say what you will, with no consequences to be had. Don't you realize that degrades women? Don't you see that becoming what you are fighting against destroys the logic and truth behind your cause? Did you fail to see all of the women you left behind in your body positivity campaign? How about all of the single mothers who chose to keep their baby instead of aborting it? You cheered on mothers who killed a human and asked the mother who struggled to raise her baby why she didn't just have an abortion. The very things feminism used to stand for were thrown out with the bathwater. You were told to hate men and the patriarchy and, and those who keep you down. However, Taylor Swift and others like you, if it wasn't for men and what you call the patriarchy, you wouldn't even have a job. One race, one family, two types, and billions of variations within each. I'm not here to slam feminists or feminism. I'm here to remind you what it stood for. I'm here to remind you how it fell so far astray. Today, feminism is about hating men and destroying your body rather than fighting for what women truly need. It should go back to meaning something valuable. We may, we may be men and women according to God, but we are more alike in the middle than we are different. Our differences really only show on the few outliers, and I support us finding a way to love everyone and support everyone. How do you feel after this chat? Did I help you to learn something new? If so, please like and share this video with all of your friends as that really helps to spread the message. Are you upset from this episode? Do you have data or evidence to support why you're upset? I would love to hear about it in the comments section, unless you're just reacting to my mansplaining. And as always, come back Thursday for my new, vi my new video trying to keep up with the current times. Thanks for coming, I hope you enjoy your day. I'm sorry if you heard the cat scratching in the background. I'll see you later.